Welcome to the last video of the four-part series of Focus Board Review for Antibiotics. I'm Dr. Ryan Sheehy, and I'm here to talk to you about a very focused, uh, really just looking at two classes or two groups of antibiotics, the polymyxins and metronidazole. So let's dive right into it. Let's first start by looking at the polymyxins. These are cationic detergents, and there's really only two drugs here, polymyxin B and colistin. And a lot of, uh, a lot of people actually will, will refer to colistin as polymyxin E. The polymyxins themselves have a unique mechanism of action in that they disrupt the outer membrane of gram negatives, which al allows them to then lead to the intracellular components of the bacteria leaking out, which leads to bacterial cell death. Polymyxins also bind to and inactivate endotoxin. Resistance for the polymyxins is fairly rare. Uh, and really, one of the big resistances is gram positives, as polymyxins are only effective against gram negative bacteria. Focusing on adverse effects, the polymyxins are typically well tolerated if administered topically. However, parental administration can lead to nephrotoxic and neurotoxic side effects. The reason that topically administered uh, polymyxins lead to less side effects is that these uh, topically administered polymyxins result in very little systemic distribution. As I referred to above, polymyxins are only active against gram-negative bacteria. So what are some uh, clinical applications of the polymyxins? Topically, polymyxins are used in a triple antibiotic cream that you can pick up from your local uh, drugstore. Parentally, polymyxins are used more for salvage therapy for gram negatives, and these can include coverage of Enterobacteriaceae, Pseudomonas species, Acinetobacter species, E. coli, and K. pneumoniae. The last antibiotic that we'll cover in this video is metronidazole. Uh, this is a free radical mediated uh, DNA damage. That's the mechanism of this specific antibiotic. So as I mentioned, the mechanism of action for metronidazole has to do with free radical mediated DNA damage. And this is due to the formation of a highly reactive anion that's formed only in anaerobic bacteria. So very specific coverage here. Uh, the activation of metronidazole is required for it to be active. So therefore, metronidazole is a prodrug. The anaerobic pathogenic microorganisms contain electron transport components that have a high enough negative redox potential to donate electrons to metronidazole. This allows an electron to be donated to metronidazole, which can lead to the formation of that highly reactive uh, nitro radical anion uh, that I'm talking about here. Uh, once this anion is formed, that is then what in turn leads to the free radical mediated DNA damage. Resistance to metronidazole can develop due to an increased level of intracellular O2. Now, this intracellular O2 can compete with metronidazole for electrons. And so when also, when O2 rises or levels of O2 rise, the metronidazole is less likely to enter its active nitroradical anion form, and so it's less likely to um, elicit its DNA damaging. Uh, another another uh, resistance mechanism is impaired O2 scavenging, so there's just more O2 around. The adverse effects from metronidazole are very unique compared to some of the other antibiotics we've covered in this board review series. They include me metallic taste as well as a disulfiram-like effect. Just to remind you, disulfiram is an anti-alcoholic medication that's designed to induce vomiting if the patient consumes alcohol while taking it. A similar effect occurs when a patient takes, takes metronidazole. Therefore, if a patient ingests alcohol during or up to three days after therapy is ended, then they will likely experience vomiting, flushing, abdominal discomfort, or headache. The clinical spectra uh, for metronidazole, or really the clinical use, includes anaerobes as well as flagellated um, protozoa. Uh, here's some specific examples listed out here. So this wraps up the video. Again, here are the sources I used um, in this video. If you found this uh, video helpful, uh, please let me know on Twitter. Uh, please uh, contact me there. My Twitter handle is down below in the video description. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, and thanks for going on this journey with me through this board prep review material. Uh, if this is the first video in the series you're watching, go back and hit up the other videos. Uh, see, see, see what you've been missing. And if you need more details about these antibiotics, Again, I would refer you to my series on uh, much more detailed videos and all these different antibiotic drug classes. So uh, with that, good luck on your board exams and uh, thanks for watching.